Holy Father in heaven, thank you for giving us life and we thank you Lord for sustenance and security, protection, food, shelter, clothing, the air we breathe, the water we drink. We are grateful to you and we we know Lord that it is not because of our goodness or righteousness that these things are secured for us. It's understood as a token of your love and your tender mercy towards us. We do not deserve them. We worship you, Lord, and say glory be unto your name. We know, Lord, that you have requested that we give our lives wholly as a living sacrifice unto you. Lord, we pray that as we go through the words of our devotion and as we fellowship with you today, you would give us power and equip us to do what you want us to do and give our lives over to you. Put your words in my mouth and grant us all of your spirit that we may be blessed with the words that we will hear. Do this and take the glory. In Jesus' name I have prayed. Amen. Conflict and Courage, October 27 The Fragrance Lingers Verily I say unto you, Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial. Mark chapter 14 verse 9 The fragrant gift which Mary had taught to lavish upon the dead body of the Saviour, she poured upon his living form. At the burial, its sweetness could only have pervaded a tomb. Now it gladdened his heart with the assurance of her love and faith. Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus offered not their gift of love to Jesus in his life. With bitter tears, they brought their costly spices for his cold, unconscious form. The women who bore spices to the tomb found their errand in vain, for he had risen. But Mary, pouring out her love upon the Saviour while he was conscious of her devotion, was anointing him for the burial. And as he went down into the darkness of his great trial, he carried with him the memory of that deed, an earnest of the love that would be his from his redeemed ones forever. Many there are who bring their precious gifts for the dead. Tenderness, appreciation, devotion, all are lavished upon one who sees not, nor hears. Had these words been spoken when the weary spirit needed them so much, when the ear could hear and the heart could feel, how precious would have been their fragrance. Christ told Mary the meaning of her act. He said, She did it for my burial. As the alabaster box was broken and filled the whole house with its fragrance, so Christ was to die, his body was to be broken, but he was to rise from the tomb and the fragrance of his life was to fill the earth. Looking into the future, The Saviour spoke with certainty concerning his gospel. It was to be preached throughout the world, and as far as the gospel extended, Mary's gift would shed its fragrance and hearts would be blessed through her unstudied act. Kingdoms would rise and fall. The names of monarchs and conquerors would be forgotten, but this woman's deed would be immortalized upon the pages of sacred history. Until time should be no more, that broken alabaster box would tell the story of the abundant love of God for a fallen race. Amen. The title of our devotion for today is The Fragrance Lingers. The fragrance being referred to here is the one that came from the alabaster box of Mary. Do you perceive it? Are you getting it? Of 
course, it's a figurative term to express what Jesus said concerning how this act of Mary would be talked of and will continue to have its influence because that's what a fragrance is. When there is a fragrance in a place, you do not necessarily see the color of the thing bringing the fragrance. It's gaseous like a perfume, but then we perceive it. It has its effect on us. It doesn't make us run away. Have you passed by a place where there is a waste? Maybe it could be human dung or a place where food or waste from the kitchen is dumped and how does it, what effect does it have on you? You run away from it. But then there's a difference when there's a good fragrance. You are drawn towards it. It has a good effect on you. And it can put a smile on your face. It can make you feel good. But when there's a terrible fragrance, your face changes. It squeezes your nose. Immediately it has an effect on your face. Your mouth drops. There is a frown and you put your hands on your nose and your legs begin to walk faster. If you are driving, you want to move quickly away from that place. Some people stop breathing just because of a terrible fragrance. So, when we talk about the fragrance lingering today, we are referring to the effect of the life of Mary and of the and the effect of the act of Mary in breaking that alabaster box on Jesus and much more the effect of Jesus' life upon us. That alabaster box represented Jesus. Let me just read now from the book of Mark chapter 14 to just put in perspective the story we are talking about. Reading from verse 3 to 9, it says, And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, very precious, and she broke the box and poured it on his head. And there were some that had indignation within themselves and said, Why was this waste of the ointment made? For it might have been sold for more than three hundred pence, and have been given to the poor. And they murmured against her. And Jesus said, Let her alone. Why trouble her? She had wrought a good work for me. For you have the poor with you always, and whensoever you will, you may do them good. But me you have not always. She had done what she could. She is come aforehand to anoint my body to the burying. Verily I say unto you, wherever this gospel is shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be spoken of for a, memor- for a memorial of her. Amen. Now, the words of Jesus here is very key. He said that this thing that Mary did will be spoken of, not for a mo- memorial of himself, but for a memorial of Mary. How about you? Have you broken an alabaster box that will make it to be that there will be a memorial of you because of the great sacrifice you made for God and the great love that prompted that sacrifice? You know, sacrifices are not measured by God based on how much was spent on it, but how much love actuated it, how much love, div- uh, how much love prompted and motivated it. What Mary did here reminds me of the saying, people never get their flowers while they can still smell them. You never know what you have until you lose it. The thing like, that we read in Devotion, Conflict and Courage, page 306, paragraph 3 says, Many there are who bring their precious gifts for the dead. Tenderness, appreciation, devotion, all are lavished upon one who sees not nor hears. Had these words been spoken when the weary spirit needed them so much, when the ear could hear and the heart could feel, how precious would have been their fragrance. End of quote. You know, some of us are ashamed and afraid to show people that we love them. Because it looks as if you are defeated. That's what it looks like. But is that really the case? Did Jesus withhold his sweet words and love from us? No, he didn't. Some of us are so afraid to say to people how much we care for them. We have it in our hearts and kudos and credit to us for that. But how much do you express that love? How much do you show your appreciation for people? Do you love to be appreciated? Is it right to be appreciated? Of course it is. When Jesus healed the ten lepers and only one of them came back to show his appreciation, Jesus had to ask, what of the other nine? Have they not come back? And he said, no. 
what do we learn from there jesus shows us that it is right if you are a child of god to be thankful and appreciative towards your fellow humans who have done things for you whether you love to receive appreciation or not is not the issue here but we should be able to give it mary gave her appreciation to jesus while he lived not when he died a contrast to that is given to us in the life of nicodemus and joseph of arimathea they loved jesus but they refused to express it they loved jesus i'll say that in a different way they loved jesus but they did not express it while he lived jesus went to his grave with the knowledge that mary loved him not after he had died and then you start to speak all those flowery words on him the fragrance still lingers today of the act that mary did and you can have either a good influence on people or on the world in general or a bad one mary's oil the spike nut that she broke that alabaster box the influence that it has on people today is that we realize that we are to show our love for jesus even though it will cost us much to do so and that fragrance is still lingering and we ought to be an influence for good for all in, uh, in the life of all those around us talking about how we are to show our love and express it in words to people around us we are told in the book of proverbs chapter 25 verse 11 a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in pictures of silver we should learn to show love to those around us while we live and not withhold it and this word love can be shown in the words fitly spoken proverbs 15 verse 23 says a man hath a joy by the answer of his mouth and the word spoken in due season how good is it another version says what a joy it is to find just the right word for the right occasion words have power and we are to be liberal with our kind words and cheerful smiles many of us are liberal with criticism but very stingy with our kind words and will only only speak kind words when the person who is spoken of is dead of what benefit is it to the person when he is dead we have our parents and friends and loved ones but we will not be kind to them till the day they die but this act of mary and, and jesus response to it shows us just how heaven views the case reading from our high call in page 238 paragraph 2 and 3 we are told kind words pleasant looks a cheerful countenance through a charm around a christian that makes his influence that's a fragrance now almost irresistible this is a way to gain respect and extend the sphere of usefulness which costs but little it is the religion of christ in the heart that causes the words issuing therefrom to be gentle and the demeanor condescending even to those in the humblest walks of life a blustering fault-finding overbearing man is not a christian for to be a christian is to be christ-like he who drinks in the spirit of christ will let it flow forth in kind words and be expressed in courteous deportment the plan of salvation is to soften whatever is harsh and rough in the temper and to smooth off whatever is rugged or sharp in the manners external change will testify of an internal change the truth is the sanctifier the refiner received into the heart it works with hidden power transforming the receiver but those who profess the truth and at the same time are rough and sour and unkind in words and deportment have not learned of jesus all these manifestations show that they are yet servants of the wicked one no man can be a christian without having the spirit of christ manifesting meekness gentleness and refinement of manners end of quote amen but then i i just need to give a caution not to speak loose words that arouse feelings in the opposite sex for example how many men tell their fellow men and how many women tell their fellow women kind things how many give cheerful looks to the same sex as i'm saying you know sometimes we'll say oh kind words but we reserve our kind words for only the opposite sex is that what we're referring to here how many times think of your life you see that sometimes men are very cold towards themselves i'm not saying all the time and same thing with women to women there's nothing wrong in being tender and kind to one another i'll continue the reading 
it says pleasant kind and well-bred christians will have an influence for god and his truth it cannot be otherwise the light borrowed from heaven will shed its brightening rays through them to the pathway of others the words we speak our daily deportment are the fruit growing upon the tree if the fruit is sour and unpalatable the rootlets of the of that tree are not drawing nourishment from a pure source if our affections are brought into harmony with our savior if our characters are meek and lowly we evidence that our life is hid with christ in god and we shall leave behind us a bright track beholders will discern that we have been with jesus and learned of him end of quote so one lesson that we are learning from this act of Mary that Jesus said we'll keep speaking of it like I'm doing now is that we should have our gifts our best gifts given to those whom we love while they still live and one way we can do that like I'm saying now is true kind words they are a fragrance that will linger in the minds of those whom you speak them to that will give them peace Jesus was pleased with what Mary did he was happy with it and he did not refrain to express his joy at the fact that mary went at such a great sacrifice to do this for him when he was dead many people started to show their love for him but he was not alive to receive it let us learn to appreciate those who we love while they live kind words cost us nothing speak kindly to people do not be quicker to criticize than you are to commend do not be swift, more swift to um, fall, do some fault finding than you are to appreciate those who have done good things for you and let it be sincere. Mary was quick to show her appreciation for Jesus. It could have been misconstrued and it was. People said all kinds of bad things about Mary because she showed her love for Jesus. She expressed it. And today too, you may be afraid that people will misconstrue what you say about someone because of how much pure holy love you have for them. But do not care about that. The world is such a terrible place. We need more kind words than we need criticism today. People are suffering. Just a kind word, appreciating them or thanking them or even if it's not appreciation and thanks, but just being kind in your acts and your co- your deportment towards them will cho- throw a charm upon them cheerfulness will do the same thing such that it would awaken the spirit that was dead so let us learn to have a fragrance that lingers and that's what kind words do they have a fragrance that lingers and a cheerful deportment that's what it does have you noticed how when you smile at someone even though you've not done anything the person smiles back having a cheerful countenance and a smile on the face it's a very good fragrance that lingers but when you frown what happens it affects everyone in the environment and they are wondering what's going on they find it difficult to smile they frown also you can spoil an environment you see that frown I've been in a situation where somebody is just bitter frowning in the environment and it makes every other person not to smile because we affect one another we have a fragrance if you come with your depressed fragrance around people or your bitter fragrance around people you spread the bitterness around if you come with your lack of cheerfulness or your uncourteous behavior around people what happens it affects them and that's your fragrance will also linger but it's going to be a terrible one like the smell of feces from someone's gut that makes it makes everybody to run away and squeeze their face and hold their nose they don't want to remain in that environment that's what your uncheerful uncourteous and unpolite deportment does to people it's like feces they run from it their face changes they begin to frown they put their hands in their nose the face now becomes no longer cheerful but also it looks uh, the, 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 the effect of that your behavior lingers on them in such a way that even stains them you know when you have uh, feces smelling somewhere it can st- the, 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 the fragrance lingers on your garment sometimes and when you go away from there you are, you are smelling just like the thing that you just passed just like smoke can stain you that's how terrible our bad behaviors can be and our wrong words can be on people but then if you go around the place where 
things is smelling nice you come out from there you also are affected by it christians are to be like that we ought to have a fragrance that lingers a good one on people like we saw in the devotion christ um conflict and courage page 306 paragraph 4 it says christ told mary the meaning of her act he said she did it for my burial as the alabaster box was broken and filled the whole house with its fragrance so christ was to die his body was to be broken but he was to rise from the tomb and the fragrance of his life was to fill the earth looking into the future the Savior spoke with certainty concerning his gospel. It was to be preached throughout the world, and as far as the gospel extended, Mary's gift would shed its fragrance and hearts would be blessed through her unstudied act. Kingdoms will rise and fall, the names of monarchs and conquerors will be, bro- will be forgotten, but this woman's deed will be immortalized upon the pages of sacred history. Until time should be no more, that broken alabaster box will tell the story of the abundant love of God for our fallen race. End of quote. Amen. So another thing that alabaster box represented was the body of Jesus, which was broken. And not until it broke was it able to give its fragrance to the world. Look at that bottle of perfume around you, maybe a body spray. It is, you know, if you break it on the floor, what happens? Its fragrance spreads all over. What does this breaking represent? It represents the death of Jesus on the cross. And for us too, we all have our own fragrance, just like Mary's fragrance, not necessarily in the bottle, but in her actions, is spreading to us today. And not just Mary, every single character in the Bible that you see was a, an influence for good, they also have a fragrance that lingers till today. How about you? Will you have a fragrance that lingers? If you do, what kind of fragrance will that be? Would it be like the fragrance of Mary, of Jesus, of Moses, of Daniel? Or would it be like the fragrance of Cain or like that of Satan? It is our choice to make. The acts of love we do for Jesus today will not go unnoticed. That is what Jesus was trying to say about Mary. This act she has done, it's not going to go without taking note of it. People are going to talk about it. And so Jesus is telling you, the acts of love that you do for him out of your sincere heart, it will not go unnoticed. The act of Mary here does not mean that this is the greatest act of love ever done to Jesus, but Jesus singled it out to show us that he is not indifferent or careless towards the expression of love we show to him today. He accepts it as much as he accepted the gift of Mary. Reading from Christ Triumphant, page 267, paragraph 4, we are told, We shall pass through this world but once. Any good that we can do, we should do earnestly, untiringly, in the spirit that Christ brought into his work. How can students, who are greatly in need of help, be encouraged to press on in the right way? Only by treating them with the love that Christ revealed. You may say, we should treat them as they deserve. What if Christ treated us thus? He, the sinless one, was treated as we deserve, that we, fallen and sinful, might be treated as he deserved. Teachers, treat your unpromising students as you think they richly deserve, and you will cut them off from hope and spoil your influence. Will this be? No, a hundred times, no. Bind the one who needs your help close to a loving, sympathizing heart, and you will save a soul from death and hide a multitude of sins. End of quote. Amen. Why have I gone through this reading? Because you may be thinking, but some people do not deserve this fragrance of love and kind words. Yes, treat people as they deserve. And what will be the result of it? You will cut them off from hope and spoil your influence. You spoil your fragrance. Will this pay? Like we read, no, a hundred times, no. So if you are waiting for people to deserve kind words and your courtesy and politeness before you give it to them, you will never help them that way. Give even if they don't deserve it, just like Jesus did to us. Did you deserve the kindness that Jesus showed to you on the cross? Did I deserve it? I didn't deserve it. I don't even till now. But yet he did it nonetheless. That is our example. Jesus received the fragrance of Mary's love and he deserved it very well. Mary received the fragrance of Jesus' love but she knew she did not deserve it. And you and I know that we don't deserve it. But yet it should call forth greater appreciation towards Jesus. But how? 
How do we appreciate Jesus? Like we showed in our devotion yesterday. We loved him because he first loved us. This is how he showed his love for us, that he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for who? For him? For the brethren. Love for Jesus is shown in love for humanity. That's how we show our love for Jesus. Let the fragrance of our lives go forth to those who don't deserve it. Speak those kind words. Tell people how much you love them and appreciate the good things about them, not just the things about them that are not good. Many of us are very quick to talk about how what we don't like in people's lives. But how, when was the last time you told people, you know why I like you? Because of this and this and this. You usually do this and that. And even if you don't have something to say about how much you like them, you can still be kind to them in the way you treat them and the way you do things for them. Whether it is people you who are close to you or strangers. May the Lord give us the grace to have a fragrance that will linger in this world, both in ministry for our Lord Jesus Christ and also in helping fallen man. Not just to lead them to Christ, but just by our character, having a beautiful, courteous, meek, loving character, the fruits of the Spirit being revealed in everything we do, that we may show forth the praises of God who has brought us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Husbands, wives, you remember, maybe you have become cold towards one another. You are no longer as loving as you were before. Some of us are thinking, my husband doesn't deserve to be told the kind things. Or my wife doesn't deserve to be told kind things. You have become cold. Iniquity has abounded and the love has drawn has gone cold. Children to parents. Maybe you feel, I need to be uptight. Let me not show that I really love my parents. And then friends to one another, many of us, especially like I said, to same sex, because there's a danger, of course, with the opposite sex. But in the case of Jesus and Mary, there was of opposite sex until today. People are accusing them. People are saying, "Oh, Mary and Jesus, it, maybe they had an affair." Oh my, just leave that. If there is the genuine love, we are learning now. Jesus did not rebuke Mary, and if there is that genuine holy love, it can be expressed, and. As far as it is holy and genuine, it will not lead to any evil. Jesus accepted the love of Mary. But of course, if you are doing it wrongfully, time will tell. Because you realize Mary was not angry with Jesus that Jesus did not marry her or something like that. She didn't have such disappointments. And if your love for anyone is genuine, it will show. Because when you hear good news about them, you will be happy. You will not be selfish towards the person. There is selfish love. The one that is done. You are giving gifts. Mary did not break the alabaster box because she wanted Jesus to marry him. She did it out of a pure, holy love. That was what it was done for. And if you have that love for your sister, your fellow sister, or your fellow brother, it is safe to do it and to show that love for one another. But we'll let the world be filled with love like it was for Jesus he filled this earth with the love of his character and his acts towards everyone. And we also should learn to fill the earth with love. Love that will not be misconstrued, of course, but let it be in our own hearts, genuine, clear to everyone and to yourself especially. That you are not deceiving yourself, but you indeed are showing your appreciation and love for humanity, both with strangers and with those who are around you. If you find yourself being courteous and kind and loving and, and very polite to the opposite sex alone and to your same sex you are not doing that your love is very questionable that your kindness is questionable and if you see yourself doing it outside but in your home you are not that kind you're not that courteous to people around you then your love your kindness is very questionable it is that of that selfish kind that just wants people to love you and that's what you are trying to do that's why you are showing kindness to people or but when you go to your home because you have become too familiar with your family members you're not as kind to them as you are to people outside the home that's not what god wants for us he wants it to be a fragrance when you break a perfume here does it select the people that it is being it is influencing everyone around gets a bit of it we all perceive it except of course somebody has a problem with their um, ability to perceive to smell except that but 
you see that the perfume is not selective that's how you also shouldn't be selective in whom you sh- in who you are showing your love to was jesus selective he died for the whole world so also we shouldn't be selective we are to show the love to everyone not only those who deserve it but even to those who do not deserve it let us contemplate in our minds what are the ways we can do this today is there someone your parents who you know that if this person dies now you are going to write very beautiful eulogy for the person why don't you do it now do you have to wait till the person dies before you start to write those beautiful eulogies and um, panegyrics no you can write those panegyrics right now and tell the person you don't have to wait for the person's birthday like people do and you want to honor the person on their birthday no you don't have to wait till then let people know you love them even now appreciate those around you and have less of those fault-finding criticizing words may the lord bless us as we do that let us pray thank you dear father for this lesson i pray lord that it will not be rested out of its true meaning but that you will help us to be filled with genuine love for one another and appreciate one another forgive us for the times we have been so cold and formal towards each other but i pray lord that you will help us to be genuine in our love and uh, pure in it for one another and especially for you as we have learned to give our lives to you by showing love to our brethren and to humanity all around us thank you lord for hearing and thank you for answering our prayers in jesus name i've prayed amen Setting the captives, free, causing the blind eyes to see.